I think uh, intelligent life begins when you become self-aware and ends when you buy a smartphone. <laughs> um, seriously, I think it's more of a continuum than we realized. I think that, you know, an octopus, a dog, you know, a blue whale, you know, they all have some degree of intelligence, and it's probably much more of a continuum. But no other species, so far as we know, for example, has a written language or the capability for written language and mathematics and abstract thought. So um, it's very hard to say. It's more of a philosophical question than a scientific one, which is not, you know, I don't mean to dismiss that question. I think it's very important, but I have no idea where to begin answering it. And our final question. We have been doing the back a little bit loud. No, the front is still silent. All right. You know, you've had your hand up for like three rounds. Go you. So my question was, if there's been so much time elapsed, what if we're actually just the first life uh, that's intelligent in the universe? And if we are, as we expand out into other planets where children could be potentially born and then would be biologically stuck based on gravity, would they then become the other intelligent life in the universe? So are we merely the seeds of intelligent life in the universe? Well, you'd have to vote my way on this uh, question if that were the, tr the case. So I'm all for it. Uh, but like you say, the, the age of the universe is beyond our comprehension. We, the third generation stars are the ones that where life could exist, and they've been around for billions of years. So the likelihood that we're the first is, well, real small. I do believe there have been civilizations, but as I said earlier, they follow a natural progression. And the fact that we're not hearing from any of them, unfortunately, means they did not pass through this difficult period that we're going through right now. And I'm hoping we do, because like I said before, Earth is, the life here is precious and unique. I'd like to thank you all for your fine and excellent questions. We will be moving on now to the closing statements. We'll begin with our opposing debater. Mr. Halliday, you have three minutes. <clears throat> Page two. First time that's ever happened to me. Uh, I keep talking about the, si the great silence as being a cautionary tale, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope I am, you know. I hope that someday we do detect life on other worlds, and uh, in terms of this question, we can only detect life that is transmitting. We can't detect a, a bug or a, you know, a microbe on another world. Uh, we um, recently had a change to, by the Bulletin of uh, Atomic Scientists. About two weeks ago, they changed the doomsday clock to 100 seconds from midnight. Now, I take this very seriously. Uh, I tend to be somewhat active, not as a politician or anything, but I pay attention to our political uh, world and I think the question was asked um, uh, when things get politicized the science gets forgotten and we need to not do that uh, we have a chance to survive and I'm with you I want to survive I also want to meet aliens but you know I'd rather survive <laughs> uh, you know um, so we need to see this in a serious light. If we are arrogant enough to think that, that okay, ignore the signals, uh, the lack of signals, and just believe that there are aliens out there, it kind of absolves us of the responsibility of, of considering our life and the other life on this planet, all the species. We need to 
manage this because we are the intelligent species under certain um, circumstances. Well, we'll find out in November for sure. <laughs> and uh, I do want to live, I want this to, uh, this experiment of life to go on on this planet for a long time and become multi uh, planetary, multi stellar. That's my hope. And yes, maybe we will be the seed of life throughout this galaxy, at least. Thank you. Okay, so is that better? I hardly know what to say because I, I keep beating you over the head with numbers and how many zeros are in the numbers. That's, um, that's not really the point. Um, let's talk more about the Fermi paradox. There could be many reasons we haven't heard from a civilization. They could be already dead. They could be alive but have not yet invented radio. They could be alive and have radio but be very, very far away. In fact, so far away that their signals haven't even reached us yet. So we couldn't possibly have an opportunity to find them. But if we, if we make an argument from silence, that's not... That's not really a scientific argument. The, um, the fact is we don't know whether there is intelligent life elsewhere in the universe, you know, now or in the past or later. We simply don't know. Now we can make, you know, reasonable guesses about the details, which is, you know, the beginning of science is just to, to think. And hopefully we think of things that we can test and measure but some things are very hard to test and measure, and we're not able to yet. But I'll go back to the numbers. I want to offer you something that I call the parable of the bacteria. This, uh, this involves the idea that bacteria can think. You know, it, I'm not being serious about that. It's just a story. But I want you to think about all the grains of sand in the world. Imagine a world map, if you like, all the coastlines, all the beaches, all the deserts. Now let's narrow it down to just the Gulf of Mexico. In fact, let's narrow it down to Port Aransas. In fact, let's narrow it down to one particular sand dune and one particular double handful of sand and then one pinch of sand, and then one grain of sand. Now, on that particular grain of sand, there lives a colony of bacteria. And they sometimes discuss the possibility that there might be life elsewhere on Earth. That, basically, is the position we find ourselves in. There you have it, lovely Dionysians, the arguments for and against the fact, or <clears throat> for it and against the question of whether we are, as Babylon 5 might put it, all alone in the night. I have my nerd cred too, guys. <laughs> what we have come to now is the moment of truth, the moment of decision, the moment of voting. Uh, for now, you'll have a chance in the primary in a month. I urge you all to vote then as well as now, but also vote now. So. The question, as stated, is that there is intelligent extraterrestrial life. So if you agree with the question, so ably argued by Mr. Fulton, raise one hand defiantly skyward, please, and our maestro will count. I don't know why you're all laughing. Is he making faces again? Uh, 
always with the faces. So I would just like to take this opportunity to let you know that weather permitting, we will all be heading over to cover three after the event for discussions. Do keep in mind that, you know, there may be ice, snow, dunes, Yeti. I don't know. It's, it's a madhouse out there. Oh, the maestro tells me he is done. So you may put your hands down. And now, if you instead oppose the resolution, as argued by Mr. Halliday, please raise one hand defiantly skyward. No double voting, folks. I, I totally made a mental record of everyone who's already voted. I'll know. I would like to take one moment and say, Ms. Cavender said that most of you know someone who's received donated blood. In case you don't, you do now, because I've received five pints of it, and it's why I'm alive. Please. Go donate blood. And now, before we, before we receive the results, please one more round of applause for our fabulous debaters. <laughs> I am pleased to announce we are not, in fact, alone in the universe. The motion has carried. Thank you all. In the universe. Is it bullshit or not? Thank you, Mr. John Halliday, Mr. Hal Fulton, and Dionysium debate moderatrix Rowan Halliday. Yeah! I don't know about outer space, but uh, they've certainly proven that there is intelligent extraterrestrial life here at the Dionysium. Yeah. <laughs> oh. How about that band? They're doing math over yeah. there right now. The math band! <laughs> Jamming with calculators over there right now. Ladies and gentlemen, like the Earth itself, after the uh, sun inevitably burns out, our show has sadly come to an end. Why are you so sad? But wait, there's stuff on the screen. Now you feel better? Nerd night! It's free. Nerd night, one, two, three. Let's be real, nerdy with each other. Wednesday, February 12th. That's coming up. February. Sorry, I didn't pronounce it right. Witness Day, February 12th. 8 o'clock at the North Door. It's free. Be there. And be square. I was reading yeah. it. Wow, this keeps getting cut over here. What else does it say? Oh, man. What's all this about? Tell me more. Persistence of Vision Publishing is the publisher of these great books and more. So go to pov-publishing.com, get the books, learn about the world and all your little responsibilities and so forth. That uh, yeah. Great stuff, folks. Yeah. Everybody's writing a book. <laughs> Woo! All right. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, are you going to tell them about the thing? Oh, look at that. Oh, hell yeah. This is good. I don't need to read that to you because you guys... Uh, mostly know how to read. But that's going to be a hell of a show. The Maestro! You going to be there? Yeah? Mm. That's a great movie, too. It's a great movie. Uh, what else? Got more pictures? Yeah, this is the stuff right here. So first you're going to want to put on your fur hat and your scarf your ear muffins, your face mittens, and your glove hands, your coat jacket with your glove jacket and the coat hand, and uh, also your leg scarf. You're gonna wanna walk out side and then just go to cover three. It's, you can walk there if, it's, if the snow drifts aren't too high. 
so easy, ladies and gentlemen. And that's not all. Also, also. we should say the loudest happy birthday to the Dionysium staff's own William Gold. If everybody could just, as loud as you possibly can, say happy birthday, William, <coughs> on the count of three. One, two, three. Did you hear it back there, William? William Gold, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you to our presenters, Ms. Amy Cavender. Ms. Mo DeVoe. Yeah. Mr. Hal Fulton. Mr. John Halliday. Dionysian President LBDO. Mr. Lance Fever Myers. Our debate moderatrix, Ms. Rowan Halliday. And of course, a huge thank you to our amazing Dionysium staff, Ms. Megan Dobson, Ms. Rowan Halliday, Mr. William Gold, and of course, the Dionysium First Lady, Ellie Hanlon. And that amazing band over there, Utah Hamrick, Jeremy Brock, and the maestro, Graham Reynolds. I am Dionysium Chairman, Buzz Moran. I'm Dionysian President LBDO. Stay science, y'all! <laughs> <laughs>